Hi everyone and welcome to my monthly favourites video. This is the video where I go over just some of the things that I've enjoyed in the last 30 days and spend a few minutes just kind of gushing about them really. In this month's episode I'm going to be talking about a learning platform, some poetry, a TV series and a video game. All of the timestamps are linked below so if you want to jump around feel free to, I'm not going to be offended. So the first thing that I've really been enjoying this month is Skillshare. Now I'm sure by now you've seen a million YouTubers talk about Skillshare and to be honest I've always been put off by it as well, mainly because of how many adverts there are for it. But last month I decided let's just give it a go. I wanted to try and learn a few things about filmmaking, particularly how to colour grade properly and how to take decent b-roll. Now I took a few different courses, a few on photography itself, some videography, some colour grading, but one of the courses that I took that really stood out to me was Nathaniel Drew's course on documenting your life. Now, if you've never seen Nathaniel's YouTube channel before, then you're really missing out. He delivers some amazing content and this Skillshare course was no different. I'm gonna go into more detail about Nathaniel's course in another video because I really feel like it warrants that. I want to cover some of the things that I've learned from it. But if you have Skillshare already, I'd really encourage you to at least give it a go. It's only about an hour long, and if you start putting these methods into practice, you'll find kind of looking back on your days and weeks and months really, really fulfilling. If you've been putting off Skillshare until now, why not just give it a go? It's a month's free trial, and you know, you can try Nathaniel's course yourself and let me know what you think. There's a bunch of other courses on there as well for anything that you want to learn, from cookery to photography, videography, anything you want. I'm not affiliated with them yet, but it's just something I've been enjoying over the last 30 days. So the other thing I've been enjoying over the last month is a bit of an odd one. It's poetry, and specifically haiku. I was introduced to haiku from a couple of places really over the last year. The first one was when I picked up Ghost of Tsushima on PS4. Now one of the kind of, not mini games, but side quests you can do I suppose, is finding all of these haiku locations where you sit down and compose a haiku, reflecting on what's going on around you and what you've sort of learnt to date. I found that mechanic really, really interesting actually, and it allows you to kind of reflect on where you are in the story and remind you of things, but put it in quite a weirdly beautiful way. The second place where I learned about haiku was on James May's documentary, Our Man in Japan, which in itself is such a great series, I'd really recommend that as well. But the actual haiku section, while admittedly it's meant to be a bit satirical, it's really quite insightful and you learn a lot about haiku and some of the history behind it as well. It was in a Zoom call with one of my best friends where I just started talking to him about haiku. It turns out he'd been interested in haiku for a while as well and was thinking on jumping on Twitter to get involved with the haiku community. So I started doing the same and have been composing my own haikus ever since. I found that that really simple structure of 575 really quite freeing and almost liberating in a strange way because with traditional poetry there really isn't any barriers you know you can you can kind of do what you want with it it's really expressive whereas because haiku has that set limitation it gives you a lot of freedom to express your creativity through those limitations and actually it puts kind of a cap on it which makes you have to focus a lot more on what you want to say and how you want to communicate your feelings. One of the haikus that I composed the other day to celebrate the turning of spring, particularly as it's now warming up in the UK, a high of 25 degrees Celsius in March, very weird. But to mark the occasion, I thought, I'm gonna write a haiku at eight in the morning. Oh glorious spring, a warm embrace, a cool breeze. Winter bids farewell. If you're interested in following a bit of my haiku journey, you can follow me on Twitter, at Resangulata. Um, I don't post them every day, just every now and again, but it's a fun thing to do. And the haiku community are really, really nice people, actually. They're really supportive and tend to give pretty good feedback as well. So, the next thing that I've been enjoying over the last month is a television show, specifically a Netflix show called F1 Drive to Survive. Now, I've never really cared for Formula One racing growing up, but it was always on around the house. My stepdad was really into it, so I've never really been able to escape it, it just wasn't really my thing. A couple of years ago, Netflix commissioned a documentary to follow all of the Formula One racing teams on their global racing circuits. Now, the documentary itself is so wonderfully done. It really captures the drama, the intensity, and just the sportsmanship behind it. 
and gives you this behind the scenes look into Formula One racing, which you never really get from following it on television. Personally, from someone who's really into cinematography as well, it's hard not to appreciate how good the cinematography is on Drive to Survive. It feels like Netflix put some of their best people on this show. You could pause at any time, and it's basically a perfect screenshot image that captures the mood so wonderfully. Now in its third season, Drive to Survive takes you behind the scenes of the world's biggest driving championship, now faced with the difficulties of navigating an international championship in a new COVID world. The cinematography itself is absolutely beautiful, and watching it in 4K is mind-blowing. Netflix have honestly created one of the prettiest and most engaging documentaries in recent years, and I honestly can't wait for the new season every year. If you've ever had an inkling of interest in Formula 1, I'd really recommend giving it a go. Maybe watch a couple of episodes from the first season, see if it clicks with you. I know now that I follow Formula 1 religiously. It really just clicked for me. It really helped me appreciate what goes on behind the scenes. All of the drama involved, all of the money, all of the expertise, the skill, and the professionalism involved. So that's been my third favourite thing this month. My final favourite thing this month has been a video game. Jurassic World Evolution. While it's not a new game, it was released in 2018, it still looks and plays as sharp as any other modern strategy game that's out at the moment. It's actually a reimagining of a game from 2003 called Operation Genesis. I have really fond memories of that game, and it was at a time where tycoon games were really at its peak. If you were ever into something like Roller Coaster Tycoon or Theme Hospital or anything like that, then Operation Genesis would have fit right in with those, and Jurassic World Evolution is no different. Essentially, the premise of the game is that you need to build a dinosaur theme park, where you need to send teams off to excavate fossils, you need to bring these fossils back, extract DNA from them, and gather enough DNA to be able to incubate a good living, breathing dinosaur. Once you've incubated and hatched your dinosaur, it's time to release them into their environment, which you have carefully curated for them. In the game, you have to manage so many different factors. You have to understand which of your dinos are herbivores, which are carnivores, which need to live in small herds, and which need to live in larger ones, which even live on their own. Aside from managing your dinosaur's environment, you also need to cater for the guests, and make sure that they have adequate shelters if a dinosaur breaks loose, or if a tropical storm hits the island. And finally, as with all management sims, you need to be monitoring your finances whilst taking quests from other people around the company. The concept itself may sound a little overwhelming, and the truth is, it kind of is. But what Jurassic World Evolution does is it guides you through it, through a wonderful tutorial system. The tutorial introduces you to mechanics in a slow, methodical way. And before you know it, you're managing these large enclosures full of dinos that you've carefully named yourself, called Bethany, Stephen, and Donald. <laughs> I've had a load of fun with this game, honestly, in the last month, and it's been such a great way to blow off steam after work. If you've ever been interested in any of those old management sims, I'd really recommend giving it a go. It's pretty cheap now, because it's a couple of years old, and you can pick it up on pretty much any platform. PC is probably going to be the better option, but you can also pick it up on PS4 and Xbox and things like that as well. I picked it up myself from the Epic Games Store for a few quid. It's really not that expensive, and it goes on sale all the time. So, give it a go. See what you think. And that has been my favourite things for the month. What do you think? What have been some of your favourite picks for the month? Drop me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. If you've enjoyed this video, give me a like. I'd really appreciate it, and it helps the channel grow. If you'd like to see more from me, hit that subscribe button. I upload new videos every Monday at 9am GMT. Until next time, ta -ra.